Lamentations chapter 4 Our glittering gold has grown dull. The stones of the temple lie scattered in the streets. Zion's young men were as precious to us as gold. But now they are treated like common clay pots. Even a mother wolf will nurse her cubs. But my people are like ostriches, cruel to their young. They let their babies die of hunger and thirst. Children are begging for food that no one will give them. People who once ate the finest food die starving in the streets. Those raised in luxury are pouring through refuse for food. My people have been punished even more than the inhabitants of Sodom, which met with a sudden downfall at the hands of God. Our princes were undefiled and pure as snow, vigorous and strong, glowing with health. Now they lie unknown in the streets, their faces blackened in death. Their skin, dry as wood, has shriveled on their bones. Those who died in the war were better off than those who died later, who starved slowly to death with no food to keep them alive. The disaster that came to my people brought horror. Loving mothers boiled their own children for food. The Lord turned loose the full force of his fury. He lit a fire in Zion that burnt it to the ground. No one anywhere, not even rulers of foreign nations, believed that any invader could enter Jerusalem's gates. But it happened because her prophets sinned and her priests were guilty of causing the death of innocent people. Her leaders wandered through the streets like the blind, so stained with blood that no one would touch them. Go away, people shouted. You're defiled. Don't touch me. So they wandered from nation to nation, welcomed by no one. The Lord had no more concern for them. He scattered them himself. He showed no regard for our priests and leaders. For help that never came, we looked until we could look no longer. We kept waiting for help from a nation that had none to give. The enemy was watching for us. We could not even walk in the streets. Our days were over. The end had come. Swifter than eagles swooping from the sky, they chased us down. They tracked us down in the hills. They took us by surprise in the desert. They captured the source of our life. The King, the Lord, had chosen the one we had trusted to protect us from every invader. Laugh on, people of Edom and us. Be glad while you can. Your disaster is coming too. You too will stagger naked in shame. Zion has Lamentations chapter 5 Remember, O Lord, what has happened to us. Look at us and see our disgrace. Our property is in the hands of strangers. Foreigners are living in our homes. Our fathers have been killed by the enemy and now our mothers are widows. 
We must pay for the water we drink. We must buy the wood we need for fuel. Driven hard like donkeys or camels, we are tired. But we are allowed no rest. To get food enough to stay alive, we went begging to Egypt and Assyria. Our ancestors sinned, but now they are gone and we are suffering for their sins. We are ruled by those who are no better than slaves and no one can save us from their power. Murderers roam through the countryside. We risk our lives when we look for food. Hunger has made us burn with fever until our skin is as hot as an oven. Our wives have been raped on Mount Zion itself. In every Judean village, our daughters have been forced to submit. Our leaders have been taken and hanged. Our elders are shown no respect. Our young men are forced to grind corn like slaves. Boys go staggering under heavy loads of wood. The old people no longer sit at the city gate. And the young people no longer make music. Happiness has gone out of our lives. Grief has taken the place of our dances. Nothing is left of all we were proud of. We sinned and now we are doomed. We are sick at our very hearts and can hardly see through our tears because Mount Zion lies lonely and deserted and wild jackals prowl through its ruins. But you, O Lord, are king forever and will rule to the end of time. Why have you abandoned us so long? Will you ever remember us again? Bring us back to you, Lord. Bring us back. Restore our The Book of Ezekiel, Chapter 1 On the fifth day of the fourth month of the thirtieth year, I, Ezekiel, the priest, son of Buzi, was living with the Jewish exiles by the river Kibar in Babylonia. The sky opened and I saw a vision of God. It was the fifth year since King Jehoiakim had been taken into exile. There in Babylonia, beside the river Kibar, I heard the Lord speak to me and I felt his power. I looked up and saw a storm coming from the north. Lightning was flashing from a huge cloud and the sky around it was glowing. Where the lightning was flashing, something shone like bronze. At the center of the storm, I saw what I looked like four living creatures in human form. But each of them had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight and they had hoofs like those of a bull, like polished bronze. In addition to their four faces and four wings, they each had four human hands and one under each wing. Two wings of each creature were spread out so that the creatures formed a square with their wings tips touching. When they moved, they moved as a group without turning their bodies. Each living creature had four different faces, a human face in front a lion's face at the right, a bull's face at the left, and an eagle's face at the back. Two wings of each creature were raised so that they touched the tips of the wings of the creatures next to it, and their other two wings were folded against their bodies. Each creature faced all four directions and so the group could go wherever they wished without having to turn. 
Among the creatures, there was something that looked like a blazing torch constantly moving. The fire would blaze up and shoot their flashes of lightning. The creatures themselves darted to and fro with the spread of lightning. As I was looking at the four creatures, I saw four wheels touching the ground, one beside each one of them. All four wheels were alike, each one shone like a precious stone, and each had other wheels intersecting it at right angles, so that the wheels could move in a way in any of the four directions. The rims of the wheels were covered with ice. Whenever the creatures moved, the wheels moved with them, and if the creatures rose up from the earth, so did the wheels. The creatures bent wherever they wished, and the wheels did exactly what the creatures did, because the creatures controlled them. So every time the creatures moved or stopped or rose in the air, the wheels did exactly the same. Above the heads of the creatures, there was something that looked like a dome made of dazzling crystal. There under the dome stood the creatures, each stretching out two wings towards the ones next to it and covering its body with the other two wings. I heard the noise their wings made in flight. It sounded like the roar of the sea, like the noise of a huge army like the voice of Almighty God. When they stopped flying, they folded their wings, but there was still a sound coming from above the dome over their heads. Above the dome there was something that looked like a throne made of sapphire, and sitting on the throne was a figure that looked like a human being. The figure seemed to be shining like bronze in the middle of a fire. It shone all over with the bright light that had in it all the colors of the rainbow. This was the dazzling light that shows the presence of the Lord.